Hello, and welcome to another video from 3.5 Archive. And today we're going to be doing our 60th D&D 3.5 Prestige Class review. And we're going to be looking at the Lore Master, one of the original Prestige Classes from the Dungeon Master's Guide. The Lore Master is focused on acquisition of all sorts of knowledge, of hidden secrets and, you know, hidden lore. And they use this mostly for, you know, divination purposes. They're focused on divination, but... They also gain various secrets that give them some other abilities as well. So let's take a look at the Lore Master. To become one, you're going to need 10 ranks and any two knowledge skills. And you're going to need any three metamagic or item creation feats, as well as skill-focused knowledge of any knowledge skill. You're also going to need to be able to cast seven different divination spells, one of which must be third level or higher. So this is going to be a good prestige class for wizards, of course. Uh, because they're going to have the intelligence that's going to make it easy to get into those skill ranks, and they're going to have a bonus feat that's going to make it a little easier to meet those feat requirements. It's also good for archivists and clerics. For sorcerers, you're probably not going to want to fill up your spell list with seven different divination spells. You're going to want to contribute those sparse uh, spells known to something, you know, a little bit more, a little bit less focused, perhaps, on divination. While divination is, in a lot of ways, the most powerful magic school out there, uh, it does well to only take a few spells from it and focus on other things so you can be useful, you know, outside of just figuring things out. So probably for wizards primarily, and then, you know, clerics and archivists as well, and a variety of other classes can also feed into this. You just need to be able to cast seven different divination spells, so that part's easy for clerics. The metamagic and item creation feats maybe less so, it depends on the build. The skill-focused knowledge is going to be a sort of feat tax as most characters aren't going to want it. Maybe the Archivist, and maybe if you're playing one of those adventures that has those scaling knowledge difficulty classes, or you're playing with Monster Manual 4 and 5 monsters that have, you know, knowledge skill check tables for knowing about the monster. But other than that, it's, and even then, it's really not going to be a very good investment of a feat. So it kind of costs you a feat slot right off the bat, and it puts some pretty strong restrictions on how you spend your other feats. So we'd rate this prestige class requirements as moderately restrictive. As for what the Lore Master gives you, you're going to get a D4 hit die. You're going to get 4 plus intelligence modifier skill points per level. So you're going to be a little bit of an improvement on a Wizard and Cleric. You're also going to get half your level base attack bonus and a good will save. So pretty much the same stats as a Wizard, which is what this class is geared toward. So that's going to be pretty typical. You're going to get an advancement to your spell casting at every level of this prestige class. All 10 levels are going to give you plus one level of spell casting. And that's great right off the bat. Because that means if you're coming in here as a wizard, the only thing you're losing by taking levels in this prestige class, on top of, you know, the prerequisites you had to go for, is going to be the two bonus feats. And this prestige class gets a feature at every level. So odds are you're going to get enough value out of this that's going to make up for the two feats you lost. And so let's take a look at those features. At level one, you're going to gain a secret. You're also going to get one at every odd-numbered level. So you're going to get five secrets in total at first, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth level. You're going to choose one secret from the table below, and you can choose any of the secrets, uh, but you are limited by your level plus intelligence modifier. So if you have a really high intelligence modifier going into this prestige class, then you could, I guess, grab the highest one right away. But otherwise, you're going to have to kind of go through things slowly. You're going to be picking five of these. And you're probably going to have at least a fourth, a plus four uh, ability score bonus. That's pretty reasonable to expect. So when you come into this prestige class, you can probably pick from the, you know, five to ten range if you want to. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't even have to necessarily look at the lower ones. Uh, but let's take a look at these because they are kind of the core of the class. So the lowest tier one is Instant Mastery. It's four ranks of a skill in which the character has no ranks. If you're really starved for skill points somehow as a wizard with good intelligence, then I suppose you could take this one, but you're pretty much not going to want to take it. Secret Health is going to give you plus three hit points. That's nice, but that's just basically the toughness feat, which is considered, you know, widely considered to be pretty bad, except at first level as a wizard to give you a little bit more survivability. But if you're playing to go past first level, then proportionally the benefit of this goes down with every level. So you're not going to want this one either. Um... Secret of Inner Strength is going to give you plus two on will saves. And you're not going to need a lot of help in that department as a wizard. If you fall victim to a confusion spell, then you're going to run run around whacking people with your staff. Unless your dungeon master is a particularly cruel interpretation of how that spell works. Uh, and while it is really bad to get locked down as a wizard, your greater weakness is going to be fortitude saves. So the lore of true stamina is going to be more worth considering. That's going to give you plus two on fortitude saves. Effectively, it's going to be great fortitude. 
this does kind of replace these these your features do kind of replace feats in a way um this one's pretty good to have i mean targeting a spellcaster with a fortitude save based spell is a time honored tactic as you know they're not going to have good ones also though the secret knowledge of avoidance is going to give you plus two and reflex saves and that's going to be another weak point for you and a lot of wizards are probably going to have slightly higher constitution than dexterity despite what the books suggest for their pre-generated characters so you're going to need all the help you can get in that department i mean getting blasted with a fireball might kill you i mean you might be capable of killing yourself with your own fireball so if you fail a reflex save and get fried that'd be very bad so having a little bit of an edge there can be good weapon trick will give you plus one on your attack rules which includes for your range touch attacks which you know usually you're not going to need help with those but then again you are still a half level uh, base attack character and you're going to be getting a little bit behind due to the you know odd math here with going into a prestige class that has half level base attack so this can help make up for that probably still not the most recommended one but early on you're not necessarily gonna be able to pick the highest level one so it might be good to just choose this one or the one that gives you bonus on fortitude or reflex saves the dodge trick is going to give you a plus one dodge bonus to armor class and spellcasters you know wizards and sorcerers aren't going to have the best armor class in the world but they do have alternate methods of defending themselves like mirror image blink displacement and greater invisibility so worrying about your armor class probably isn't the most important thing Applicable knowledge will give you any one feat. As for, you know, how this works exactly, this seems to be able to give you just, you know, any feat. As for whether you still have to qualify for it, it doesn't really seem like you have to. So this can be pretty strong if you're missing the requirements for a feat you want. Um, usually you're not going to have difficult time hitting the prerequisites for, you know, wizard feats, but this can help you get ahead a little bit. As for the last two, you're going to get Newfound Arcana, and more newfound arcana which is a bonus first level spell and a bonus second level spell that you gain as if you gain them with a high ability score and being able to gain those bonus spells you know extra spells per day for a sorcerer but more likely it's going to be um you know that for a wizard it's nice to have you're not going to be using these as much and while more spell slots is always good you're going to be running into this issue where you're not necessarily going to be using these as often you're going to find when you come to the end of your adventuring day as a wizard that you still have a lot of those lower level slots already sitting there with spells prepared and you can look at this as giving you a free spell slot to cast you know mage armor all day and free that up but you're already not going to be starving for that spell slot anyway so these features they are, don't necessarily graduate perfectly in power they don't increase perfectly with the level plus intelligence modifier the best ones to probably take would be lore of true stamina lore of inner strength for those bonuses on fortitude and will saves Secret Knowledge of Avoidance for plus two bonus on reflex saves. Uh, the plus one on attack rolls is good, and having any one feat is good. Uh, the dodge bonus to armor class, you know, maybe. And while the spell slot ones, again, they seem like the most powerful option, uh, you're probably going to get more use out of those bonuses to your saving throws than you are having those extra spell slots in a lot of cases. Um, it's not like you can necessarily you know, quicken these, quicken spells with these. These are going to be first and second level spell slots. So they're good for utility spells, but you real, really you're not going to be starving for those as a wizard or sorcerer in your typical adventuring day, which is going to usually be four encounters or fewer. And that or fewer part really, you know, comes up a lot. It's not that common for a full adventuring day to really play out. Uh, but if you are going to be playing a long time, you have a lot of adventuring days or being able to have to cast, you know, a lot of spells then those higher level options a newfound arcana and more newfound arcana will be good but as is it'd be good to have those plus two on will saves plus two on fortitude saves plus two on reflex saves plus one to attacks and any one feat and while you could look at the applicable knowledge as requiring you to have the prerequisites for it which it seems to because it doesn't say otherwise it doesn't say you don't have to have those prerequisites so it's kind of just replacing the wizard bonus feat in some ways one of the two that you would be missing out on by taking all 10 levels in lore master um but it's still good to have i mean you're going to be starving for those feats more than you're going to be starving for first and second level spell slots at second level as a lore master to go back to the other features um it gains the lore feature which lets you know legends and information regarding various topics just like a bard uh, this is going to be just like a bard acknowledge check you add your level and intelligence modifier to the lore check and this is going to trail behind a lot of your knowledge skills because it seems to be adding your 
lore master class level, if it's adding your full character level, then this would obviously be excellent because it's going to be a universal knowledge check. But if it's just doing it, you know, using your lore master level, then that's not going to be very good. You're going to get a bonus language at 4th and 8th level after you get your 3rd level secret, of course. At 5th level, you're going to get another secret. And then at level 6, you're going to gain greater lore. This lets you understand magic items as with the identify spell. Except this is an extraordinary ability and you can use it at will. So that's going to bypass any of those pesky spellcraft checks and, you know, negotiating with the dungeon master to let you go outside the rules a little bit and having to ration your detect magic slots and everything. And again, your identify slots. It'll save you hundreds, maybe thousands of gold pieces. And it's just a really great feature. And remember that you're getting this alongside full spellcasting. So if you would be willing to take a feat to be able to do identify at will, then you should be willing to take this prestige class because it's going to give you the benefits of multiple feats you know, like Great Fortitude, uh, Lightning Reflexes, and that sort of thing, uh, as well as giving you these features that you can't get from a feat very easily, and it lets you get them pretty much for free. So you are kind of down three feats for this Prestige class, but it's going to be giving you back, you know, really four or five feats. Finally, at level 10, after you get your other bonus language and two more secrets at level 7 and 9, you're going to gain True Lore, which lets you use your knowledge to gain the effect of a Legend Lore spell, or an analyzed Weomer spell once per day, again. And Legend Lore takes a long time to cast to gain all that knowledge that you get from it. So being able to do that once per day is an extraordinarily powerful effect. If you're lost in your campaign, or there's some kind of you know hidden secret lore that you would otherwise have to go to some you know hidden library for to seek it out slowly over many adventuring sessions, you can potentially get around all that by being able to do a Legend Lore spell once a day. And Analyzed Weomer is pretty great. It lets you discern all the magical properties in a number of creatures or objects. So it's like a souped up identify spell. And being able to do that for free once per day is going to be pretty nice. I mean, it's going to be one round per level that you can focus on one magic item each round and figure out all its properties. And it doesn't say that you have to do the um, material components for this. So you're going to be able to bypass a lot of those you know, drains on your gold fund by having this feature. So the Lore Master is a really great prestige class. It's going to give you some little perks here and there. It's going to give you some benefits to your saving throws, some benefits to your attack rolls, and that sort of thing. It's going to give you an extra feat uh, if you take the proper secrets. It's going to give you a lore ability similar to Bardic Knowledge, and it's going to give you basically free use of Identify and a once per day use of some pretty powerful higher level divination spells. So overall, I give the Lore Master five stars for concept, and really five stars for execution. It's not for everybody, but it's going to give you full spell casting while giving you all these great features. There's really not a downside to taking it apart from it costing you that one feat. And again, if you'd be willing to take a feat to do identify at will, then you should be willing to take some levels in this prestige class and go through all the hoops you need to jump through in order to get into it. So that's going to be it for this D&D 3.5 prestige class review. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and so on. And leave a comment with what prestige class you'd like me to look at next or any other video related to 3.5 that you'd like to see. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time here on 3.5 Archive.